what education is required to become an anthropologist? <laughs> a lot of desire, okay? And what, what happens is you, you know, go through undergraduate years uh, and you major in anthropology, and then you have to do a graduate program. Uh, you can do a master's, PhD. Uh, there are, you know, there's quite a few master's level forensic anthropologists out there. Uh, and they have a qualifying examination in the American Board of Forensic Anthropology, the same way that the doctoral components do as well. So uh, again, take four years of college and then at least two years uh, of graduate work. Wow. Ah, yeah. So it, 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 it's, a, it's a lot of uh, dedication. And like he said, you know, you got to really want to do this. This is not right. something and that... Yeah, and a real important piece, of course, is to, you know, have a mentor in law enforcement and a medical examiner so that you find out, you know, what's going on at the scene, you know, and how all this stuff, to, you know, fits together. So both at the crime scene, you know, with the medical examiner, and then if you have to go to court, and that's a whole other program we could talk about, you right. know, being responsible for it, you know, the jury, you know, talking about, you know, resolution for families. How do you hold up a skull of a victim? You know, you know, looking at a jury is one thing, but when the parents of that victim are sitting there in the courtroom, you know, and you have the skull of their daughter or son, you know, explaining things, that's it's quite a humbling experience. Where have you traveled to work in the field in anthropology? Uh, my work has been uh, Central America, did some human rights work in Panama. Uh, and then in Australia. Uh, most of it has been, uh, of course, US-based, uh, but d again, did work in Australia uh, with my friend Ian, um, actually is a visiting professor over there, uh, and then the human rights work in, in Central America. So when you die, if you donated your body, what's the process? How does the body get uh, to the body farm? Who's well, responsible what happens, for that? Well, there, well, there's several avenues. It d depends on where people are. Um, you know, there's a, the best thing to do is uh, it's hard to, to, to find those sources. If someone wants to email me, they can do that. I'll be glad to answer because I know the forensic anthropologists that have those facilities, you know, as far as Texas, North Carolina, um, you know, these different areas. A lot of my colleagues have, you know, small operations that are going on. So it depends on where this person is. Uh, but I just have paperwork they sign and there's a witness and, and that's pretty much it. So it's a very straightforward. Again, does that family need a death certificate? You know, and that's another layer that has to be taken care of. So there's a formality to it. Do they have to bear the expense of getting the body to to your body farm? It depends on where they are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in, now in Tennessee, uh, Georgia, places nearby, you know, there's no expense at all. Um, it depends on the medical examiner. It depends on if there's uh, transfer um, availability. So. But then again, if you're going to cross state lines and go several places, then it might be more that might be more complex. It's dealt with on a case by case basis. No one is making any money off such a such a thing like this. It's a donation to science. A lot of fresh remains go to dentistry or medicine or something like that. If there's any decomposition, of course, that's what we're interested in having. So, can you donate organs then have the body donated? And I think we talked about this on the last show. Uh, but could you uh, answer on that? Because she maybe wasn't here. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that that can definitely take place. Um, a lot of times the bodies have gone through uh, uh, organ donation services, whether the eyes, uh, bone is taking quite a bit of the time. So there are several times when we don't get a whole bunch because of ribs and long bones taken. Uh, but, but definitely organs. Yeah, organs can be taken out because we pretty much don't do anything with those except allow them to decompose to understand processes so and, yeah. and, and thank you for that doc and do the families get the remains back the bones if they want it uh, of their loved one absolutely i mean they're on they're on loan for us to study but at any point in time if someone wants to know what's happening i mean i've i talked to probably a handful of people who want to know did anybody come and study my loved one did anyone come and look at uh, the skull or the long bones or anything else. What did someone learn from looking at the bones of my loved one? So uh, I talked to several people that, um, you know, check in routinely on that. Um, there's been several where, you know, uh, like I said, Uncle Jack shows up and said, well, I'd have buried her 
you know, and the family went ahead and rushed without my, you know, without consoling with me. So there's all sorts of different uh, avenues where the bones are returned to family. Now, we don't own them. They're, they're given to us so that we can learn something. But every family has a different type of a grieving process and acceptance. So we, you know, abide by that. Now, you keep the bones of uh, once you're done with the bones, you keep all of them all cataloged and boxed up and uh, on the shelves. And if the family wants them back, they can get them back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you know, and again, I can't send a, a box of bones to a family. You know, they have to tell me what funeral home. I'll send the bones to that funeral home and then the family can decide they want to cremate or uh, bury or something like that. You know, or or I can have that done here and then send them the remains, you know, the ashes or whatever. So besides the indigenous wildlife that come with, um, to uh, nibble on the bodies, do you do any studies where you actually expose the body to an animal like a pig or so forth to see uh, what they would do? No, we haven't done any of that. Um, I'm pretty sure that the uh, Forensic Anthropology Center uh, over at UT hasn't done that, but I'm not really sure uh, exactly. You know, I just want to keep everything, just want to keep everything um, where the body is complete. We don't dissect parts off. We let the body decompose and all the bones are together so that if family someday wants, you know, wants their remains, you know, they get all of them, you know. There's not fingers or toes in some carnivore's gut somewhere or, you know, something else like that. So um, we've kind of prevented that. Um, now, there's been studies with pigs looking at, um, you know, other critters, you know, like cats or dogs or deer, you know, roadkill, that type of a thing. Do they give tours at the body farm? Ooh. Um, well, at, at mine I do. Uh, the one that I have in, um, uh, I, I've taken people out there that are interested and, and, you know, I'll do that. And, and, you know, again, for an educational purpose, not there's no pictures taken. There's none of that type of thing. But um, there's people interested in this process and it's an educational facility. Um, we honor and respect uh, the families and, of course, the individuals that are donated. And, you know, to that end, you know, we you know keep things on the on the professional level. I mean, like, again, no pictures, no parties, none of that kind of stuff. But. You know, a lot of times I'll give a lecture first and then if they want to go through there. I am the law enforcement liaison for EquiSearch Midwest. That's the search and rescue yeah. group. And there, I don't know if you're familiar with them, but Tim Miller, I've had him on my show here with us. Uh, he's from Houston. He is the founder of EquiSearch, um, the nonprofit that searches for the missing. Um, and uh -huh. uh, he had asked me, uh, and along with the um, co-director of the Midwest chapter in Ohio, they had asked me, hey, you know, would, because we're searchers, we find skeletal remains. Uh, they ne have never, you know, messed up an investigation for um, a law enforcement. And they, they've been out on over 2,000 of these. But he asked me, he said, oh, you know, if, if I, we wanted to you know, pay to send some of our guys through, um, uh, re you know, recovery remains, skeletal remains, re do they do stuff like that? So that's a that's a question that I have for you. Do you do yeah, absolutely. Just reach out to me, and I'll um, you know, we can arrange things. So yeah, excellent. excellent. Um, I've done a lot of work with with the cadaver dog. Um, yeah, yeah, they have a whole they have their whole team. So that's great yeah. for me to know. I'm putting that in my pocket, and I will reach out to him on Monday. Who in their right mind would want to go to a body farm? Isn't it kind of morbid? I don't think so. I think it's educational. And I think it's something that, you know, when you're in the law enforcement field and you've seen so many people in different, I don't know what that was. That wasn't, wow. I might've been on the doctor's end because I, I think don't know. It was, that, yeah. That's a fun. Um, yeah. You know, I've seen so many dead human bodies in different states of deeper composition that, you know, for me, I, I, I'm fascinated with the study, uh, with anthropology, with the odontology uh, and all the things that we've been speaking about. So, uh, I was the one who put that forth, and no, I don't think it's morbid at all. Doc, you got any feelings on that? Well, you know, the deal is that there's a lot of individuals that are interested in this process, um, law enforcement primarily, because it answers, you know, answers the question, you know, not all, you know, not all decedents, not all victims are fresh remains. That if there's time between death and, you know, discovery, you know, soft tissue changes. And in order to understand that, in order to give resolution, identification, 
um, so that family members can move on with their life and settle up with a grieving process, we need to know what happened. So it's not for everybody. Uh, whoever asked that question, uh, obviously it doesn't make any sense to you, but uh, still in all, uh, there's a lot of people that want to know what, what happened, or what takes place. And so uh, we're lucky to really have these things. I would be interested in just coming and doing a walkthrough down there as a retired professional, not to go sure. up, not to take videos, not to take pictures, but I personally myself would love to see what the great work that you guys are doing. I'd love to walk through the lab if that's um, possible and just see for myself the great work that you guys do. And then I'd take you out to dinner after that. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. The thing is, it's an educational thing. And, and, and the more open we are, the more transparent we are with the public, with my colleagues in law enforcement, my colleagues in forensic anthropology, dentistry and pathology, you know, then all of this makes more sense. Okay. If anybody wants to contact uh, Dr. Murray Marks, I will con uh, I will include in the description of this live ways to contact him. Um, he's okay with it. it. Just keep it questions related to the study uh, of the body form. So um, he's not there to chit chat, but he's there to give you information when it comes to this.